Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement and have every human being in America in particular and across the world usually have to go out into the world in a predicament of finding a job, finding a profession, finding an industry, and then literally launching a lifelong career. A career that will get them from here to there. And here means wherever the heck they are at this moment in time and their meetings all the way through retirement so they can literally walk away and have to not have to work for the rest of their marvelous life. If you haven't figured out how to do that, if you're in your 30s or 40s and are still struggling in life, it means you haven't taken the time to plan your life. It means you haven't taken the time to figure out how to produce a different life. And openly, that's the truth. So the first letter we have to look at today is A for accountability. You are accountable fully for your life. Your life and singly your life. If you have marvelous children, then absolutely you can do things to help them. Absolutely you can help them raise them up until their adulthood. But once they hit that line of 18, 20, 21, they are lawfully an adult and you have no right to speak for them. And that's the truth. As we move into B, we have the word of blessing. If you want to be a blessing for someone who's in poverty, that means you're practicing the literature of the world on religion and spirituality. Jesus Christ did the most for people who were impoverished. He did the most for people who were leopards and had illness and disease. He did the most by healing them and feeding the masses. But you are a humble person, an individual soul person. You have to look at your budget in order for before you to be a blessing. But the greatest kindness you can provide to anyone who is truly homeless, meaning that they're, they're literally carrying their blankets, they're carrying their pack, and it's obvious that they sleep in the world and not in a shelter or in some sort of tent or knapsack, is what you have to understand is that the best thing you can provide them is actually cash. Walking up to someone and saying, I'm sorry I don't have any money for you is a waste of his time and yours. Don't bother. It's an insult to you and your whole background and family. The attitude is I'm acknowledging you, but I don't want to give you anything. That's a lie. The truth is you have cash in your pocket, you have a credit card in your pocket, and your lie is that I'm going to spend money on a coffee that I need for my caffeine intake, but I'm not going to care whether or not you live or starve. And as far as I'm concerned, that's not the American way, that's a selfish way of life. But what I mean for blessings is that you can provide them two things. You can provide them that, that cash, that, that paltry $5 or $10, so they actually can eat a healthy meal. Or you can provide them a marvelous gift card that you buy with your own cash that allows them to go someplace like a real adult, feel fully vested in the world around them, and buy their own food and choose for themselves what fits their cellular health, what fits their mode and mood at the time, and what fits their body needs for their bodies to function correctly like me. Now, as far as C goes, it's about your credibility. Your credibility is totally related to your calling. What is your calling in life? I guarantee you if you're a microscopic business owner and that you're some sort of panhandler on the corner of the shop, who you look like, what you look like every minute is important to the people around you. So you can have a pissy ant minute with your people of your community and people will observe that. Then they'll see you acting in a totally different way with other different people from other communities and they'll see the dichotomy of that. In order to produce your life, no matter what your business is, from the most humblest of, of collecting of coins to the most important president of all the nation or all the corporations, it's simple. To provide people interest of, in your life or care of your life, you have to be focused on your own life. You don't have the right to go into a stranger's life and abuse them, assault them, or, or belittle them, or humiliate them. Your job is to keep, basically to make and keep customers. And to make and keep customers, you've got to be willing to care about other people. You have to be willing to serve other people, and you have to be willing to stop pissing on other people. Now, I make a living by pissing on people, by literally bringing up what I see as an observation or a columnist and a journalist and a reporter of my own life and what I see in the community, the ugliness, sadly, that I see in the community. It wasn't my intention when I started out with this. I had marketing minutes to share originally. I had, had uh, magic and mayhem minutes to share about the magic of God and what he can do in a community. But all I've seen for the last year and a half is a constant the delineation of boundaries and constant codependency of total strangers with my life that is so inappropriate, so unhealthy, it's not good for their life. And openly I see an immaturity of life. That people who come out of poverty don't recognize that people on the telephones, cell phones talking, even loudly, are not talking to them at all. And while I am the typical guy that has no noise sensitivities, that I do not want to hear your booming music, I don't want to hear your ugly sounding car and the, the violence that you put in that vehicle to be the noisiest fucking car around town as if you're the Antipate on the 400 or the Indian 500, which just literally produced itself and stayed away. What I expect you to do is know how to play in life. And how you play in life is focusing on your own life. How you play in life is not interfering with someone else's life. And how you play in life is not trying to constantly call and harass someone because you did something illegal and immoral to someone's life. 